You gotta shoot it. I want you to tell me how much time again. So we're over 100, we're averaging right at about 100 degrees, that's great. Okay, you can turn that off. Press gently until we get the smoke coming out. Okay, stick it up in there. Some of it's coming out of the face. A little bit. But it is coming out the bottom. Okay. I don't give a shit whose product I'm testing, right? I'm just a wing nut. But those little arrows we draw, the moral here is you need to be testing building materials. Because even the wing nut tests that you come up are as good if not better than what manufacturers are using. I'm sick and tired of these rules and arrows being drawn. We have to understand how, what's controlling the movement. Now, airflow is a three-dimensional geometry problem. The width, the depth, and the length is really important in terms of how air moves. And frankly, what's happening here in part is that when the propylene glycol is vaporized, how do I get it to vaporize? I add heat. So what happens is, it comes up this assembly, right? And then if it cools, it drops back down. So, the, so sometimes what I can do is, on this assembly where the heat's coming from the other side, I can put this in. And initially, the smoke goes up. Why? Because it's warm. I've added heat. And then look what happens. It goes up until it loses its heat content and comes down. Now, ask yourself, is it a good thing or a bad thing that it went up and down rather than up and out? What do you want? Up and out. Airflow. <clears throat> so you have to ask yourself, if it doesn't come out the top, but it comes out the bottom, can I still get enough air change that I draw my assemblies? And what I'm thinking in terms of these ratios that we have, and in terms of the depth of the vent shaft, what we're gonna do at the end of the next session, and then the one tomorrow, we're gonna take this and change the pitch, right? Because if it's stack effect driving, what's gonna happen is I sit the pitch down. Less stack effect, and how will I measure that? By timing, right? And, and I can convert how much air is moving over a certain time period into how much ventilation I'm getting. And then the last thing I can do is change the depth of the vent. And we're gonna do that too. Because we're gonna take it down to 3 eighths of an inch and see what happens, because that's what we use for walls. And then we're gonna take it up to two inches, because that's what Joe Stieber says you should use in snow country in um, cold climates. Question?